You know, when it comes to Christmas and celebrations similar to it, there's always rituals involved, and I always have one every year. Christmas does not start until Hans Gruber falls from Nakatomi Plaza in the first Die Hard film. Always, every year, I watch that film because it's simply one of the best films, action films, for me, films of all time, ever. And today, I wanted to talk about a game that I also hold close to my heart, even since when I was a kid back in the 90s and I used to play it on my PlayStation 1 and I also used to play it quite a lot during Christmas and it's from the same franchise and it is the Die Hard Trilogy game. There's actually two trilogies but I've only ever played the first one and this has games based on all three films and each one is unique and different and I'm going to go in depth as much as I can to talk about one of my favourite PlayStation 1 games. yippee ki -yay! The Die Hard Trilogy is one of those titles of a lot on show in a really neat package. With the three movies of Die Hard, Die Hard 2 and Die Hard with a Vengeance all use the source material for each game. Each one is very unique and a lot of fun to play so I think we'll go through this in sequence. The first Die Hard is probably my favourite even as far back as when I was a kid. It's pretty simple, you start off outside Nakatomi Plaza, get dropped off by Argyle and enter the building via its garage, all with two goals in mind. First kill all the terrorists in the building, and two, save as many hostages as possible. It's completely disproportionate from the film considering there's only like 15 bad guys in the movie, with John being somewhat sneaky and cunning, whereas in the game it's more like this. John has a pistol with infinite ammo, but every level is scattered with tons of weapons, grenades, health pickups and even bulletproof vests to make your life easier. Now the enemies aren't particularly bright, but they're varied enough to make things interesting and some of the time they even attempt to execute hostages or flank you, bring out reinforcements and all sorts of interesting behaviour like pretending to be hostages until you free them and then turn on you with a gun. Occasionally you'll even see groups of enemies added to the level via the lifts to keep you off guard and eventually you'll even run into the occasional boss fight that always drops some bonus items when killed. And each time you complete a level, one of the tensest gaming experience I have ever experienced begins. The elevator bomb. In just 20 seconds you have to find an elevator housing a bomb. Your radar shows where it is but you have to be close enough to see it. So sometimes if you're not lucky, you'll be too far away to see where to go, all the while with the countdown getting bigger, the ticking noise getting louder, violins chiming in, brass instruments, and even a final gasp from McLean as he prepares for annihilation. However, assuming you don't bite the dust from explosives, every few levels you complete, you'll get a bonus level where you have to protect the hostages you've already rescued on their way to a helicopter to extract to safety. And with 19 levels in total with 5 additional bonus levels, this game mode is by far the longest and for me the most enjoyable one in all the trilogy. And here we are, level 19. It's full of enemies to clear out, but it looks, uh, wait a minute, is that supposed to be Hans Gruber in the big pink shirt? from the film. Maybe? Oh well, that was fun. Right, now on to Die Hard 2. This game's an on-rail shooter which is even compatible with a few light guns from the PS1 era. You get to play 9 levels to shoot loads of terrorists while trying not to shoot the civilians. Keyword being... try. Not me. <gasps> Sorry madam, the fault was yours. We start out using a basic pistol, but as you progress to fight each level's quote unquote head honcho, you'll unlock better permanent weapons every level. Plus you're also able to use grenades and rockets to take out large groups of enemies and to kill both mini and end of level bosses. However when enemies and objects in the environment such as crates are destroyed, some will also drop items which you need to shoot to pick up. These range from health packs, tracer rounds, mag reloads, new temporary weapons, explosive rounds and additional rockets and grenades. It's pretty easy overall but some moments can be a lot of fun when your shots are on target and keeping an eye out for bonus targets to shoot for more items keeps the pace of the game running smoothly. 
Plus, this game does a great job of replicating scenes from the film, such as the airport, the bit where the villains throw grenades through the cockpit seat, the snowy chapel with the snowmobiles, and the bit where McLean blows up the 747 from the outside in the air, whilst also destroying loads of helicopters and shooting the plane engines. Yeah. Just like in the movie. And then we get to Die Hard 3, which I've got to say is by far my least favourite in the trilogy. What do you do in it? Well, you drive around New York City hitting times explosives with cars. Is it fun? Yeah, it's kind of fun. You can use Nitro Boost to go faster, do sharp turns around corners and hit pedestrians. You can even launch into the air sometimes. That's pretty fun. Plus there are loads of extra cars you can find around the place with different stats, and occasionally you'll even race down a long tunnel and fight boss cars. So why do I hate it? This. The handling of the cars is trash. Other cars on the map get in your way all the time, the time expiry for the bombs is way too unforgiving, and you only get three lives. How do you play it then? The main thing you need to do is either find time bonuses on the way to your objective, or sometimes find a car using a blue arrow which leads you to it, which kind of goes off the beaten path and is usually out of your way to get a bit of an advantage with handling and speed. So most of the time you either just barely miss going for the bomb with the simplest path, or you guess randomly where you might find bonuses in order to get to the next levels. Plus, the boss car's hit detection doesn't care if you bash into your target 20 times up close, or once from afar, as you need to pause between strikes to do any damage. Plus, check out these hit detection physics. Yeah, I'm having fun. However, if you need cheering up, there's also cheats! Cheating's fun. Now there are a lot of generic ones in each game that make things easier such as unlimited ammo, extra lives and infinite nitro boost and die hard free, but the fun really starts with some of the wackier ones. Well there we are, finishing on a high note at least. Let's see, uh, quick game. Not really sure. What, what, ask a friend. All right, let's give it a shot. So there we have one of my all-time favorite PlayStation 1 games. Now, for me, Metal Gear Solid will always be my favorite, but Die Hard is actually fairly close. I mean, the particular one I've said in the video that I like the most is the first one, where you're going up Nakatomi Plaza. That's definitely my favorite game. And the second game I think is a bit easy and the third game is a bit frustrating, but there's enough variety for you to really kind of pick and choose what you want to do. The cheats add a little bit of replayability, and there are even ones where you can pick certain levels in the first and third game. So if you ever are going, ah, I'm a bit too frustrated to play the whole game through, you can pick and choose what you want to play, and there's a lot of cool stuff to do. And although some people say the Die Hard film isn't really a Christmas film, and the game isn't really a Christmas game, they're morons. It is. It was like snow and Christmas trees and hot dogs. And it was really good going back to a game I haven't played in a few years that still holds up, at least in my view, that I think people these days who aren't used to PlayStation 1 era graphics and that style of gameplay would still get a kick out of. And there we have it, Die Hard Trilogy. But either way, thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video in particular. But if you've been watching the rest of the stuff I've been doing this year as a regular viewer, thanks very much. And Merry Christmas to one and all. And remember, if ever you're stuck for giving someone the best Christmas present ever, those of us in the know, we know what the right answer is. Ho ho ho! I've got a machine gun! Nice!